And I think there is type of a books which the father could not do, the son is trying to do. And this is worrying. It is difficult for us leaders, Sheikh. The reason is that if the father could not do, the son is trying now. So inshallah we pray that we win this battle. Asam Jazakallah. But for you to say father and son, they hate the community. And they have bughs, alokane bughs che community. Allahu Akbar. Wal ayyadu billah. Ayatullah Sistani on so many issues, so many matters, he has gone against Sayyidul Khui. So what, he has some personal grudge against Sayyidul Khui? Wal ayyadu billah. Sayyidul Khui, mass authenticated narrators of Tafsir al Qummi. Sayyid Sistani said, Ghalat, wrong. He was wrong. So these early Imami Rijali authorities, they used to say that we are ashamed. I mean, we narrate from this stinking liar. Ne Amara Molana ne ne Shuyukh ne Sharam Nati Auti ke de they bring you this narration from Bihar. They present it from the Mimbar e Rasul in front of your crowd. And then when they are cornered, they say, no, no, Hadith Saiche. And then when they are further cornered, they say, okay, even if it is Zaif, Hut Manis, I will accept it. Whether you like it or you don't, I will accept it. Zaif <laughs> Hadith Zaif. And then they try to use emotional manipulation to say that, okay, if it is Zaif, then what do I lose? What do you lose? You, you are, it's like saying, if I lie against Allah and the messenger and the Imam, what do I lose? So this is the issue. And then when we come out and expose this, then suddenly we are the bad guys. We are the Ghaddar. We are the traitors to our grandmother, Sayyida, Salamullahi alayha. Mm, Dar es Salaam Jamaat is basically where I grew up. My childhood was spent there. I studied in the Al Muntazir school. I studied in the Husseini Madarsa. Am I crazy? Am I a Mondazimu? Am I a lunatic that I would want evil or harm for a community that everything good in my life, so much of the good in my life, is directly connected to this community? And that's why this community is always in my du'as. I always pray and genuinely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, please save our communities from the fire, save them from humiliation on the Day of Judgment. Because I can see, in light of all the verses of the Qur'an, a hadith of Ahlul Bayt, which are verified by the Qur'an, once you understand the conspiracy of the Ghulat, you will realize our communities are in trouble. Because you people have ended up accepting narratives that go against Allah's book. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We begin in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, my respected elders, my dearest youngsters, brothers and sisters in Iman. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Messages are trickling down to us from our beloved community in Dar es Salaam. There has been community level discussion about al Islah, and it is really hurtful and distressing sometimes to see the kind of irresponsible and reckless and downright false and slanderous statements that sometimes people, <clears throat> even our Vadila, our elderly community leaders, who are supposed to be very responsible and measured in what they say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very strict in this matter in the Quran. He says, in Allah kana ala kulli shay'in hasiba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take hisab of everything, even small, small things. And mashallah, our community members are people of taqwa. They are God-fearing people. I don't understand how you allow yourself to be overcome by your emotions to the point that you start stating complete lies and slander and buhtan against people whose motivations you know nothing about because you've never sat down with them. You've never interviewed them. You've never inquired and investigated into their life's journey. What led them to where they are today? Maybe if you sat down with them, you showed them verses of the Quran and they, you allowed them to show you verses of the Quran or you don't have time to sit down with them. You don't have time to arrange these things. The lectures are there online. So many people unfortunately rely just on propaganda, on hearsay, on what they hear from the grapevine unfortunately, instead of investigating for yourself.
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat, when he is giving you his vision for an ideal community, what does he tell you? He says when uh, news is brought to you, especially by uh, people who are lacking in justice, what should you do? Fatabayyanu, investigate it. And tusibu qawman bi jahala, lest you attack and accuse people out of ignorance. Fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin. And then in the future, you become regretful that I attacked someone, I maligned someone, I smeared someone's reputation, I character assassinated someone without, without knowledge, based on ignorance. So the latest statement that has come to us from a senior community figure, community leader, he's saying in a public speech that I and my father somehow, he's accusing us of spearheading this movement for reform and course correction and trying to bring people back to the Quran, ya akhi. We're not trying to bring people close to any of our personal opinions or things from our pocket. Everything we say, do we not open the Quran and show you this is the verse? This is the hadith of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. This is the hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. This is the statement of so and so great grand 12er imami marja or scholar. We are connecting you with the evidence, with the sources. What gives you the right to repay us for this with buhtan, with slander? I don't mind if you criticize. I don't mind if you say that we disagree with you. We don't like what you are saying. But to lie about our motivations, to make false claims about our motivations, like the recent statement that we received was a senior community leader, Pramukh Saab. He's saying that he and his father have no other reason for trying to raise awareness about these issues other than bogs. This is literally the word that he used, bogs, for our community. He has hatred. Bogs means hatred and animosity and antagonism for our community. And why is that? What is your proof for that? They say, oh, why is Dar es Salaam only being targeted? Why is Dar es Salaam always being targeted? And at least now other parent federations are preparing what is there to help us to, to finalize this thing. Can we have it both take you to? Jare Moram, where my son, where Dar es Salaam, Dar es Salaam. Can Dar es Salaam come? Today, reunion by Moti Jamaat, she goes. Can he have Moti Jamaat? But Dar es Salaam is not part of it. So I think the reason is that today, one of the enemies is that if the father could not do, the son is trying now. Today, one of the enemies is that if the father could not do, the son is trying now. Today, one of the enemies is that if the father could not do, the son is trying now. Today, one of the enemies is that if the father could not do, the son is trying now. Today, one of the enemies is that if the father could not do, the son is trying now. Today, one of the enemies is that if the father could not do, the son is trying now. Today, one of the enemies is that if the father could not do, the son is trying now. Today, one of the enemies is that if the father could not do, the son is trying now. Today, one of the Baba, wherever we see batil and information is brought to us and we have evidence from the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet وسلم, and the Imams of Ahlul Bayt and the books of the scholars, if we have evidence against it, don't you think we should present it? How do you people believe we should keep quiet? You believe we should keep quiet? Then why do you say in ziyarat that وَلَعَنَ اللَّهُ أُمَّةً سَمِعَتْ بِذَلِكَ فَرَضِيَتْ بِهِ May Allah also curse those who heard about these evil atrocities and they remained silent. So silence is a crime in the face of batil. So that's why my dear brothers and sisters, we also, we are not after any particular, why do you think we are after any particular this or that? Yeah, okay, if this Muharram, we received most, all the complaints that came to us were, were because of uh, one mimbar and what was being said on it. So how is that my fault? If I had received fabricated uh, uh, um, narrations, clips, yani clips or videos showing that fabricated narrations are being shared from Nairobi Jamaat, you think I would be like, nah, Nairobi Jamaat, nah, we can't touch. Or from Mombasa Jamaat or from, I don't know, New York Jamaat. No, I, I, for me, Dar es Salaam, New York, all are my uh, communities. I have visited all these places. I, I love the people over there. So there is no vested interest. There's no agenda. You people are not watching Al-Islah. Then you are making false accusations. Please desist from that. Allah will take hisab of everything. If you don't know much about Al-Islah, keep quiet. If you know something with bayina, with clear evidence, feel free. We give you license to speak out against us. If you have evidence, but you have not even seen the channel. You have not seen the numerous hundreds of lectures and episodes that we've done. And then all of a sudden, recently you see two, three, this about 
certain things that are discussed in Dar es Salaam, you come out and say, oh, he has bulls against Dar es Salaam. I would, I would say, and again, again, uh, Pramukh Saab is very dear to us. Uh, and again, despite the fact that these things are hurtful, because you are using them to discredit our da'wah. See, I don't care if you badmouth me, but I care about my da'wah. I want to invite our youths, our people, our community members to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger. And I want to present them food for thought from these sources and from the teachings of the Imams. Now you come and if you were to make truthful claims, then we would come and admit that, yeah, I claim truthful. Che. Well, ayyadu billah. Suppose if I had some kind of sinister motive and you highlighted that, at least I consider myself honest enough to, to say, okay, fine, you, you got me. Wallahi, if in this ashara of Dar es Salaam, the mimbar had been used only and exclusively for promoting the teachings of the Quran, together with the Quran verified authentic teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam, we would not have any issue. Why is it only this year that uh, Dar es Salaam was, was highlighted? Why not last year or before? the year before that because we didn't receive any reports from the community members we go by what your community sends to us so, so now if your community is complaining to us not all of it but at least there are some members some pockets in every community who are disturbed by this kind of feel-good religion that you are selling they are also worried about their children they you know what they write to us they say for example when this feel-good religion narratives are sold they say this is driving our children away from religion. So you think only that sheikh and you people are worried about the future of these children. You think Al-Islam is not concerned that this khurafat that is constantly being presented from the mimbar, this feel-good religion, whereby you are twisting verses of the Quran. Allah says Ibrahim salam was Shia of Nuh because he came after him. You are bringing fabricated narration from Biharul Anwar and sitting on the top of the mimbar and teaching the kids and the elders that no Imam Baqir salam or Imam Sadiq salam in that narration in Bihar, he says no, this this means Shia Ibrahim salam is Shia of Imam Ali salam. When you go to the Tawil, it is like that Ghada, which is not food, but it is Ilm over here in the Minshiatahi. Fifth Imam says, this is not Ibrahim following, no, it is Ibrahim in that tradition. Seeing the Anwar of Ali Muhammad says, I want to be from the Ummat. And that is why Allah says, I have made you from the Ummat of Ali ibn Abi Talib, from the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Allah, sorry, sorry. Allah, sorry, certain things I have to explain, otherwise yes. they won't know. And then we opened the books. We showed you that, look, this is the narration in Biharul Anwar. He's uh, attributing it to Imam Jafar ibn Muhammad, alayhi salam. But who is the key narrator? The narrator of this narration that Allah revealed in min shi'atihi li Ibrahim for Amirul Mu'mineen. That Ibrahim is a Shia of Amirul Mu'mineen. What did we say? The narrator is Hassan bin Ali bin Abi Hamza. What does, this is the book, Al-Mufid bin Mu'jam Rijal al-Hadith. By Ayatollah, Sheikh Muhammad, Muhammad al-Jawahiri. The student of Ayatollah Sayyid Abu al-Qasim al-Khui, what he has done in this book is he has summarized the gradings of Sayyid al-Khui. So, Look at the narrator. We are not making things up here. Al Hassan bin Ali bin Abi Hamza. Al Hassan bin Ali bin Abi Hamza. What does what is the summary of Sayyid Al Khui's research on this narrator? Kazabun Maloon. You see, you read for yourself. Some people think that we don't translate things correctly. They sometimes when they have no argument, they come up with these bogus arguments. That how do we know you are translating correctly? So I my PhD in Arabic studies that was just for for the fun of it i did uh, so many years of advanced level study into the arabic language so that i should come and sit here and lie to you about what clear arabic texts those of you gujarati ne urdu jano chene to no one can fool you about what sayyid al khui has said about this narrator and by the way the, the sayyid al khui did not get this from his pocket he's going by the riwayat the imams cursed this narrator and that's why he's saying Akazabche, he's a serial liar, shameless liar, and he's a mal'oon. Who? Who is a shameless liar? Hassan bin Ali bin Abi Hamza. Kazabun mal'oon. And this Kazab mal'oon is the one who narrates this whole narration that was presented to you from the member of Dar es Salaam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took Ibrahim alayhi salam, removed the veil in front of his eyes. You heard that narration. And at the end of it, Ibrahim said, Ilahi wa Sayyidi, oh my Lord, my master, I see these lights. 
that are surrounding and he said, oh yeah, these lights are the Shia of Amirul Mu'mineen. And Ibrahim said, oh, how will their Shia be known? And then Allah showed the signs and then Ibrahim said, Allahumma ja'alni min Shi'ati Amirul Mu'mineen. Ibrahim prayed to Allah. And he said, make me among the Shia of Amirul Mu'mineen. Yani this shameless liar did not even have this much aql to say that, Baba, if Ibrahim had been shown all the lights, had he not seen that the light of Prophet Muhammad wasallam should be the greatest? Should the light of Prophet Muhammad not be greater than the light of Ali bin Abi Talib? Then why is he saying, make me Shia of Ali instead of saying, make me follower and Shia of Muhammad wasallam? So these shameless gulat who invented these narrations, they believed Imam Ali is above Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wal-iyadhu billah. Imam Ali would not want to talk to such shameless gulat. So now I want to address our Pramukh Saab, our community members, and even our, our Sheikh and everyone else to whom this reaches. That Baba, when we have done the research, we have studied the ahadith, and we have seen that these kinds of narrations have they are found in Biharul Anwar. But who told you Biharul Anwar is all authentic? When you research the chains of Biharul Anwar, what do you find? You find that it has narrators in it, like Al Hasan bin Ali bin Abi Hamza, whom Sayyid al Khui has graded as Kazabun Mal'oon. You don't need to know Arabic even to know what this means. Kazab, Kazib. Juta, Kotaro, Mal'oon, Jena upar lanat che imamoni. To kazzab Mal'oon na riwayat, you present it from the mimbar in Dar es Salaam. And then when someone comes and exposes this and shows you research, ki ababa a fabricated narration che, ne it is making mockery of the Quran. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't, uh, he, it's not his style in the Quran that he mentions Nuh alayhi salam and then he says Ibrahim is from his Shia but the Murad is Ali bin Abi Talib who has not been mentioned anywhere in that passage. This is not Allah's style and if you try to sell this to your kids and youths you know to especially your educated enlightened youths who are going to college, university, school Baba they will renounce religion they will lose faith in religion. Say the Sistani I read to you his statements they will lose faith in the member. Then you will complain ke Shamate the youths, Imam Barga Manati Auta. They are into their social media. When you present Khurafat from the member and these absurd, nonsensical narratives, what do you expect? Okay, the, your, your elders, Bichara, they are, you know, tolerant and this and that. They will do Wawa, Nare Hadri, Indian Pakistani, Desi crowd, they might, you know, they enjoy feel good religion. But our Khojas, mashallah, they are serious about religion. What is it? It's not a good thing. It's Okay, do you understand? I I don't know if you are beginning to understand what, what a shameless narrator this was. If I can take you to the authorized book of Sayyidi Sistani, let me show you. I must present to you uh, these things so that you understand. Ayatullah Sistani's authorized book is what? Kitabu Du'afa by Ibn al Ghadairi. Look at what he presents about this narrator, Hassan bin Ali bin Abi Hamza. He says Al Hassan bin Ali bin Faddal, who is a very early authoritative imami, Rijali authority, eh? expert of Rijal. He says, Inni la astahi min Allahi an arwiya an al Hassan ibn Ali. This narrator, Hassan bin Ali bin Abi Hamza, he says, I fear God. Khudan khof che maneke, I should narrate anything from him. Ne, actually, the literal Arabic is astahi. Astahi means haya. Sharmu haya. Mane sharam awe che ke hu. From such a liar narrator, I should present to you anything. That's why you will never see me narrating from this narrator. Who is saying this? Al Hasan bin Ali bin Faddal. And who is quoting this? Ibn al Ghadairi, the scholar approved by your supreme marja, Ayatollah Sidi Sistani. So these early Imami Rijali authorities, they used to say that we are ashamed. I mean, Sharam Awecheke, we narrate from this stinking liar. Ne Amara Molana ne ne Shuyuk ne Sharam Nati Auti ke they they bring you this narration from Bihar, they present it from the Mimbar e Rasul in front of your crowd, and then when they are cornered, they say no no Hadith Saiche, and then when they are further cornered, they say okay even if it is Zayf, who to manis, I will accept it, whether you like it or you don't, I will accept it. It increases the risk. If not done, it doesn't increase the risk. Not that it doesn't increase the risk. It reduces one's risk. 
Now it's very easy for people to just say, ah, our rivayat hadith, our hadith zaif, our hadith mu'tabar nathi. Look, I don't want to discuss all of this. Then a clip bana vi hoi, then a kebu hoi, kebi rivayat hara, galat khe, zaif khe, that lakum deen, lakum balay deen. We don't care about it. Yes? Then I get a zaif tita ma naam maanu. But yaad raak jo. Agar Ibrahim baina shia, but it tame lat ki jasu. That's what I'm saying. Apan ne kai nathi karo. Nathi maanu, nahi maanu. Zaif khe hadi zaif khe. Mara maath hao par bas. But hoon to maanis. But I'll tell you why. Apan jare question answer session asa, there are a case. Emna thik apan nathi kai shakta. Pehla pat ki do tu, aaj ee vaad jethi, aaj dhup maath safed nathi tha ya. We can also talk, but this time is not for debates. This time is Abba Abdullah al Hussain. This is Hussain ibn Ali. And then they try to use emotional manipulation to say that, okay, if it is da'if, then what do I lose? What do you lose? You, you are, it's like saying, if I lie against Allah and the Messenger and the Imam, what do I lose? Baba, do you not know? Have you even studied hadith, the most mutawatir hadith? in this ummah, which is mass transmitted, according to some scholars, is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man kathaba alayya muta'ammidan fal yatabawwa maqadahu minan nar, whoever lies against me. In fact, he prefaces this hadith by saying, inna kathiban alayya laysa ka kathibin ala ahad, a lie against me, Rasulullah says, is not a lie against anyone else. You lie against someone else, that is guna. But Prophet says it is not even a fraction of the guna when you lie against me. Because when you lie against a normal, ordinary person, the damage is little. You just damage him, maybe Allah will still punish you. Allah will still take hisab. But the damage is minimum. When you lie against Rasulullah, you are distorting the deen. You can change the deen and destroy people's aqeedah by lying against Rasulullah. You are taking this crime lightly. You know, qiyamat ma jo hai. If, if I am true, if we turn out to be true, then we will be the victorious and you will be left hanging. Although we will not be left hanging. Why? Because when did we say we are not Shia of Ali? We are Shia khullas of Ali bin Abi Talib Islam. Yani we follow Ali bin Abi Talib Islam. So we are safe either way. It is you who is in trouble because if this turns out to be a lie and actually Aslan, if it is a matter of if and if it is zan, that means you should not be attributing zan to Allah and his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the problem. What do you, and then when we come out and expose this, because we don't like our community members in Dar es Salaam, our youths being repulsed and repelled from religion, just because they are presented these kinds of khurafat. So it is our duty because we've done the research. We've gone through the books of Rijal. We've seen the research of Sayyidi Sistani, Sheikh Asif al-Muhsani. And we don't blindly follow the scholars just because they have big beards and turbans. Doesn't mean that, no. We ultimately, our hujjah is Quran, which the Imams themselves said that even before Rijal and everything, first hujjah is Quran, even if the Sanad is Sahih, even if Sayyid Sistani, Sheikh Muhsani authenticate, if it goes against the Quran, if it doesn't match with the context of the Quran, don't accept anything attributed to us. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt are very clear on this. So that's why the issue is that we are not, we don't have any personal issue. We don't have any personal agenda. We don't have, how can we have hatred against anyone? Even the, the, the Sheikh who was reciting this, we don't have anything personal against him. Tomorrow, if he comes and he admits that yes, this hadith that I presented, be in light of the research of Sayyidi Sistani, who is, I believe, his marja also. Unless he says, no, I'm not under marja'i of Sayyidi Sistani. And Ayatollah Sheikh Muhammad Asif Muhsani, who is recognized expert of Ilm al-Rijal. And if you don't like these two Ayatollahs, I'm telling you, go and ask any other Ayatollah. I don't think there is any 12-er uh, Imami Rijali Ayatollah who is well-versed in Ilm al-Rijal, who knows his Ilm al-Rijal, who respects Ilm al-Rijal, who would ever authenticate this narration. Subutu, they authenticate it. Someone, yani, the heavens and the earth would, would, would turn upside down. Someone whom the early imamis said that we feel ashamed to narrate anything from this liar. Because Imam Rida has a famous hadith discrediting him. 
بس امام ديسكريدت هيم قصه خلا... ستوري فينيشت امام ديسكريدت هيم خلاص نو سيلف ريسبكتنج 12 امامي سكولر اوف رجال وود تيك ناريشنز فروم سچ ا بيرسون بت نو ذس از ذا بروبلم نو نو اي بيليف ذس از صحيح بيكوز اتس فيل جود ريليجن اتس ميكينج مي فيل جود مجمع از دوينج واه واه ناري هيدري fine you you got your nare hyderis you got your five minutes of wahwa and all of that but then the damage that you are doing to people's aqeedah tomorrow in marifa competition which mashallah our jamaats organize our children will come and these competitions are tel- uh, broadcast people from other sects can also watch imagine when our children innocently come or when they go to school they meet their sunni friends they meet their ibadi friends and they say and they have discussions and they say yeah what's the evidence for your sect and they say yeah yeah our sheikh told us that wa inna min shi'atihi la ibrahim ibrahim ulul azm paygambar was a follower and shia of ali he actually prayed to be a shia of ali do you not realize how the other muslim schools will laugh at, at this they will be like baba this is this is what your deen is this is how you play games with the quran allah is saying ibrahim is shia of nuh yani he is a follower he came after nuh and you are connecting him with someone who was not even there at that time so do you see how you are destroying our children their aqeedah their mindset just for your 5 minutes of so this is the issue and then when we come out and expose this then suddenly we are the bad guys we are the ghaddar we are the traitors to our grandmother sayyida salamullah alaiha because we are promoting the hadith of her grandson imam sadiq alayhi salam who says that look don't make exaggerated claims about ziyara that if you go for ziyara you get sawab of hajj and umrah ma yablughu hadha kulla this is lies false ma asaba man yaqulu hadha he is not correct who says this imam sadiq says this but our sin is that we present hadith of imam sadiq sin according to these people and all of a sudden we are traitors to our forefathers we are traitors to sayyida fatima imam ali alayhi salam rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam No, my dears. Alhamdulillah, we would never do this. We would never backstab our own forefathers. We would never ever undermine our own lineage. What kind of fool, what kind of absolute moron and lunatic would downplay or discredit or try to undervalue or devalue his own forefathers because of whom his first name, his title is based on his forefathers and then he tries to attack or discredit wallah <laughs> not even a crazy person could do this so then what why are we doing what we are doing because our research has shown these are lies and fabrications which bring bad name to the school of ahlul bayt i'm telling you the muslim umma will laugh at you if you if you present these kinds of khurafat which have been exposed and discredited by your own top level scholars then what is this member will lose all its value and our youths will be repelled from the religion our youths will be repelled from everything so khair this is why we have to speak out against this and you think we enjoy speaking out against this we only get hatred and 20 minutes of mud slinging and character assassination and low blows of all kinds this is what we get so you can't say that we enjoy this no one enjoys to have their good name dragged through the mud no one enjoys to be backbited no one enjoys to be slandered no one enjoys any of this there is no enjoyment in this but this is the price we have to pay for trying to raise awareness for trying to educate for trying to enlighten for trying to tell people that look our religion is not this our forefathers the imams of ahlul bayt and our grandfather great grandfather rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam this is not the deen he brought so we are defending them we are not tra- we would never ever be traitors to them we have seen of knowledge that which has convinced us that their deen and religion they were notorious ghulat and other hadith fabricators who tried to hijack that deen and that is why we are trying to oppose ghulu and all their fabrications and yes we said that it is natural and to be expected that when we do this this will happen look at the example of imam hussein alayhi salam we derive inspiration this is what keeps us going is that when sometimes wallahi i'm telling you community members whom i know from dar es salam they were even more sad after that majlis on the night of 8th of muharram they were more sad than i could be i was actually not uh, sad because i was like yeah this is going to happen i was not that sad but these community members they were so sad they literally were writing to me saying 
Sayyid, we could, the whole 20 minutes we could digest. But that part where the attack on your grandmother and on your lineage and your connection and relationship with your grandmother, Sayyida Fatima, and to say that Yazid, to try and pro project and portray you as being worse than Yazid, because Yazid respected his grandmother and somehow I would not have even that much aql and that much sanity left in me that I would want to disrespect my grandmother, salamullahi alayha, the flower of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Fatima to Zahra, the one whom for, for whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, my master, my Sayyid, my Sanad, my connecting link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He would stand up, Kanat Ida Dakhalat, when she entered, he would stand up Ta'zim Allah out of respect for her. And I would undervalue the ziyara of her son. I presented hadith of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, which he and again, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam would never undervalue his grandmother or his grandfather. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam was pained by the fact that ziyara of Imam Hussain alayhi salam was being promoted at expense of Hajj and Umrah. So he put the brakes. He said, don't do this. Ye ganda kaam nahi chalega. This dirty job we will not allow. That you want to replace Allah. This, isn't this what Allah condemns in the Quran? They have set up rivals, equals, partners with Allah so that they may block people from Allah's path. This is the whole project of shaitan. And shaitan doesn't mind making you a devotee and a worshipper of a slave of Allah who is liked by Allah. As long as he can use that slave to disconnect you from Allah and to make you forget Allah, he's happy. Look at what he did with the Christians. Prophet Isa alayhi salam is one of the greatest messengers of God. Allah says, Wajihan fit dunya wal akhirah. He is high ranking, held in honor in dunya and akhirah. And he is minal muqarrabin. He is of the company of those closest to God. And yet when the Christians made him the focus and object of their devotion and their supplication and their adoration, they became so obsessed with him. Everywhere you see Christians, Catholics, Protestants, Jesus, Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ. Their religion is named after Christ, not after God. So the Imams of Ahlul Bayt said, this is exactly what is happening in our, don't you see, in the court of Al-Ma'moon, in Uyun Akbar al Rida. When Imam al-Rida alayhi salam is asked about the ghulat and the exaggerators, he recites the verses of the Quran that Allah originally revealed about Isa alayhi salam. But he says this is now applying to our Shia, unfortunately, those who are going towards extremism. He said, Allah has said, ma kana li basharin. It does not befit and it is impossible. Allah says, it is inconceivable. Anat hai shake. Sunat hai shake. Allah says, ma kana li basharin. It is not conceivable. It is not possible for a human being that Allah should give him, should honor him with the book, with authority, with nubuwa, with prophethood. And then he should go around telling people, that he should go around telling people, become my slaves, become my devotees. I will save you from the fire. I will intercede. I will do everything for you. I am your Lord and Savior. I'm your guardian and protector. All your business should be with me. You forget about God. God, I will deal with him. You deal with me. This is what Allah is condemning. Allah is saying, impossible. Subutu, this happens. It cannot happen. That I give a, a, a prophet or a messenger, I give him the book. I give him authority. And I give him prophethood. And then he should go around telling people that forget about Allah. Forget about visiting the house of Allah. Huh? You just come to my ziyara. Come to my ziyara. I will give you get out of hell card. Forget the house of Allah. And in fact, coming to my house, my shrine, uh, you will get a sawab of one million hajj, as is mentioned in Kamilu Ziyarat. So hajj, uh, after listening to this hadith, that sawab of the ziyara of Imam Hussein is equal to one, uh, one million hajj, or even a hundred hajj, or even one hajj and umrah, who will go to hajj and umrah? Most probably one a person will do one wajib hajj, one umrah, and then khalas, khudafis, now all my trips to ziyara. But Allah says no in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, I'm presenting to you clear ayat of Allah. Allah says, I have made my house a place where you should come again and again and again. And the ghulat in Kamilu Ziyarat, 
They say, no, 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 forget about the house of Allah. You come to the shrine of Imam Hussein again and again and again. Okay. Who's, who's, uh, whose speech should we trust? Allah's speech in the Quran or these narrations in Kamilu Ziyarat? Which if you go, go and see the research of Sayyid Sistani, I think we showed it before. He has shown you the liars and the fabricators and exaggerators. Inshallah, we'll show, the, show, show it to you again, inshallah, when we, when we come to this topic specifically. So this is what the Imam said that Baba, people have lied against us. They have tried to emotionalize the deen. They've tried to make deen center on us. We are not the center of the deen. We are just role models. Look at us, learn how to worship from us, learn how to talk to Allah from us. That's what we are here for. We'll teach you the correct sunnah. We'll teach you correct fiqh, but don't make us gods. Don't give us Allah's sifat. Don't give us Allah's power. Don't give us the attention and devotion that Allah has asked you to reserve for himself in the Quran. Don't give that to us. And don't think we'll be happy if you give that to us. We ourselves devoted our entire lives to Allah. We want you to do the same. This was the message of our Imams. So that's why my dear brothers and sisters, this whole idea and this, all these false accusations that we want to undervalue or we want to devalue our own forefathers. Like they don't, they don't even think what they're saying from their mouths. Like who would want to do that? Who would want to, yani he admitted himself, Yazid would not do this to his grandmother. And someone whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored with this honor that we can never thank him enough for, that he has made us from this bloodline and again, as I clarified, this bloodline does not give you any guarantee from the adab of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, before leaving this world, he said, this is a responsibility and a burden on your shoulders. If you come to Allah with evil, expect no mercy and expect no forgiveness if you have defied and rebelled against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is still, it is still a, a sharaf and an honor and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. But we would devalue it for, for what? There is no nothing you can offer us in this world that would be worth devaluing this great honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. So in any case, all these false claims and all this prejudice and all this propaganda that you know you're devaluing and all of this, obviously when they have no Hujjah, if they had evidence, if they had arguments, they would bring arguments. They would say, look, uh, you are saying this, but we also have research. Here is our evidence. Here is our proof. They don't have any of that. So when they don't have any of that, what do they do? They resort to character assassination, bad mouthing, slander. And fine, look, this shuyukh, <clears throat> these shuyukh, I understand. These people, they have a certain mentality. They have a certain mindset. <clears throat> but at least our community elders, <clears throat> I feel, and my experience has been that our lay people are much more pious and God-fearing than sometimes the scholars and the shuyukh who sit on the pulpit. But at least from our community elders, I would expect and I would hope for better. From where do you get to say this? Who gave you the right and authority to perform this bypass or this operation of my heart to get inside my heart? and claim that I have some kind of books. I'm saying this with all due respect. And again, I will say at the end that I forgive you for this completely false claim. Allah knows it's, it's false. And let me prove to you why it is false because to say it is false is easy. What is your proof that you don't have books for Dar es Salaam Jamaat? <clears throat> I have so much proof that I can this can be a whole lecture in itself, but let me try and summarize. How, where do I start? <clears throat> Dar es Salaam Jamaat is basically where I grew up. My childhood was spent there. I studied in the Al Muntazir school. I studied in the Husseini Madarsa. If today I can speak English, it is because I was taught English at your schools. I studied under your schools. Husseini Madarsa was your institution. I studied over there. Okay, and I benefited from the love and warmth and respect of the community in Dar es Salaam. These people in Dar es Salaam, at least as far as I'm concerned, gave me nothing except for honor, for love, respect, generosity. I only saw good from them. Mara'aitu illa jamila, I can say. I did not see anything except beauty and beautiful behavior and treatment from them until Al-Islah started. 
So I had no reason to be angry or upset to or to have any personal thing against the Dar es Salaam community. You people don't even know when they send me the links to the uh, AFED competitions that you people organize, Quran competitions. You do not know how much I swell with pride when I see our young children, our young brothers and sisters, mashallah, participating in Quran Hivs competition, memorizing the Quran, reciting it so beautifully. You don't know how much I swell with pride. I, I'm, I'm so happy and so delighted to see that. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. And I make sincere du'as for you. I say, may Allah bless the community, bless its leadership, bless all those who are making these events happen. Because they are connecting people with the Quran. This is what I want. I want the best for my community. No one but a complete muandazimu, lunatic, moron would want evil or harm for his community. What will I get? You tell me. Impossible. I would never ever. A community that has been so nice to me. That has showered me so much love. So much honor. And not just that. A community that provided me the foundation. And the base on the basis of which. So many of my books in my library. Are books that I never had to buy. They were gifted to me free of cost by loving uncles and elders in Dar es Salaam. I have all those books with me to this very day. I brought them with me. And so many of these books have such amazing and precious knowledge that I still continue to benefit from to this day. And to this day, I make dua for those Hoja uncles. So you tell me after having benefited so much, even let me tell you one trivia, one personal fact, because I'm now having to prove my love for, for Dar es Salaam community, right? Although no one should be put in such a position to have to prove his love to his own community. This is the Quran from which I memorized the Quran. One of the greatest blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on me was that he aided and he made it easy for me to memorize his book. Because the Imams of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam stressed this point a lot. They said, you cannot understand our hadith. Aslan, you will not know what hadith is a lie and what, because Ghulat have fabricated a hadith and they have put them in the authentic books. So now just because a book is authentic is no guarantee that the hadith is of Imam Sadiq. He says, it's very likely hadith you are reading is hadith of Ghali. How will you know? Imam said, ittaqullah, fear Allah and every claim that's attributed, you check against this book. Now, if you take this book and install it inside your head, you memorize it, hadith authentication is going to become a piece of cake for you. Because every time you come across a hadith, the verse in the, of the Quran that confirms it or opposes it will play in your head. So you, after that, you don't even need too much ilm rijal ilm rijal we only use as a secondary confirmation. ilm rijal only helps us in finding out the identity of the liar. The hadith, we can tell like this hadith that Ibrahim was Imam Ali's Shia. Even before you see the chain, you know it's a, it's a liar. Who must have come up with this? This is not the, well, the Quran is not uh, some, uh, Allah has not re uh, revealed this Quran. Allah is not afraid of the haqq. If Allah wanted to, Wallahu la yastahi min al haqq. Allah has written inside this book. He has said, I am not ashamed of the truth. If Allah wanted to say Ibrahim alayhi salam is a Shia of Ali alayhi salam, he wouldn't say, inna min shi'atihi. He would say, inna min shi'ati aliyin la Ibrahim. What would Allah lose by, by writing three words? Nothing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, aslan, why do you expect him to say something like this? Imam Ali alayhi salam himself is a Shia and follower of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah 16, verse 123, Surah An-Nahl, he's asked to say, thumma, Allah tells him, thumma awhayna ilayka anittabi'ah. Oh Prophet, we have inspired to you through Wahi that you should follow the Milla of Ibrahim and he was not among the Mushrikeen. Go check this ayah. Surah 16, verse 123. We have ordained for you that you should follow the Milla of Ibrahim. So the Milla of Ibrahim is something that Prophets are asked to follow, including Prophet Muhammad and his Ummah, his entire community. We are all followers of the Milla of Ibrahim. So if the narrative of Biharul Anwar, those fabricated narrations is correct, then Allah would say, what is Milla of Ibrahim? Ibrahim himself is Shia to Ali. So Allah would then say in the Quran, Thumma ilayka an millata Aliyin alayhi salam wa antakuna Shia ta Aliyin. 
But Allah did not that we have revealed to you that you should be a follower and Shia of Ali, alayhi salam. But did Allah say that? Now again, we are not saying Shia of Ali is a beautiful thing that after the Prophet you support Imam Ali, you ally yourself with him. This is all beautiful. But Baba, don't force it into the Quran. You will humiliate your the school of Ahlul Bayt if you do this. Rest of Muslims will laugh at you. Like what kind of people are these? They're taking Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, putting them in verses that have nothing to do about them. Why can't you understand how demeaning and degrading and humiliating this is for the school of Ahlul Bayt? You think this is how you will raise their fadail? Baba, they have so many authentic fadail in the sources. Present those authentic fadail. Why do you need to present fabricated? So I hope you are beginning to understand in light of this Dar es Salaam Jamaat, Nairobi Jamaat, Kampala, all these Jamaats, I have been there. I don't have any problem with them. I still love our people over there. And in all these Khoja Jamaats around the world, we have strong support for Al-Islam. So even if, even if I wanted to hate your communities, I would not be able to hate them. Why? Because the biggest support and backing for al-islah is coming from your from your communities only it's not some foreign communities uh, or some other communities that are supporting and encouraging al-islah and spreading its message and having these conversations in their homes it's all your community members so please get this out of your mind yeah i was telling you about the quran this is the Quran that I memorized the Quran from. This is the Mus'haf that I used to memorize the Quran. Now tell me, honestly and sincerely, you are claiming that I hate the Hoja community. This, one of the biggest blessings of Allah, I told you in my life is what? That I mem memorized the Quran. Alhamdulillah, this made my deen, it removed memorizing the Quran with understanding, because obviously with knowledge of Arabic, otherwise there's no point memorizing like a parrot only, if you're not going to. Memorizing the Quran removed all my doubts and all my confusions about the deen. <clears throat> Reading this book, because I didn't memorize by cramming. This is I don't have that kind of stamina <clears throat> to sit and you know the way they do in the madaris. <clears throat> that was not my style. I memorized the Quran. Many people ask me, "How did you memorize the Quran?" I ask them, "How did you memorize Surah Al-Fatiha?" Did you ever sit down and cram Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah. Did you ever do this with Al-Fatiha? No. Why? How did you memorize Surah Al-Fatiha? You recite it every day. Ahsantum. That's the answer. Recite the Quran every day without fail. Listen to it. Recite it. Expose yourself to it. If you expose yourself to it every single day and you recite the Quran every single day and you try to maintain consistency, inshallah, this Quran will get inside your head. And the Imams of Ahlul Bayt used to say, Man akthara qira'at al Quran wa huwa shabbun imtazaj al Quran aw ikhtalat al Quran bi lahmihi wa dami. Imam Jafar al Sadiq alayhi salam used to say, Whoever excessively and frequently and abundantly recites the Quran during his young age, the Quran will become mixed with his flesh and his blood. Then the Quran will be a source, a barrier between him and the fire of hell. And Wallahi, this Quran guides you to the best, most authentic knowledge. This Quran is the syllabus. This Quran is the textbook. This Quran has all the guidance in it. Once you understand this book, now you are qualified to study every other book. So whatever matches in it with this book, accept it. Whatever goes against it, reject it. But why am I showing you this Mus'haf? Because I want to show you something. This very Mus'haf from which I memorized the Quran. Let me open it and show you where I got it from. So that you people understand. So this is the Quran. Okay. And this Quran was printed the same year that I was born. Um, this is a note Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim as you can see it was gifted to my father in Muharram Safar of 1996 by a pious Khoja lady from our communities she writes to Professor Kamun Puri and she writes I'm sure you will put this Quran holy book to a far better use than I have May Allah bless you with all the ilm and happiness in this world and the hereafter. Thank you for everything with du'as, Mrs. Ummul Banin, Punya. 
or Puriya. The N and R, I'm not very sure. Or maybe Puya, it could be. M Mrs. Ummul Banin Puya. Now, we do not, I, do, I was obviously very um, little at that time. So, I do not even know who this lady is. If any of you know, you can maybe perhaps reach out to the Al-Islah admins. But I always make dua for her whenever I sit down to recite the Quran because this Mus'haf was gifted to us, to my father by her. And she said that I hope you will put it to far better use than I have. So my father gifted this to me at the time when I wanted to memorize the Quran. I wanted, because we had many of those, you know, Indian uh, editions of the Quran. You know, those are which are published by Farid Book Depot and all those. So those sounded very Indian to me. I wanted Arabic. I wanted to memorize Quran Kama Muarabu. So this uh, Arabic script, you know, I, I said I want to memorize from this. So I chose this Quran out of all the Mus'hafs in the library of my father. I chose this Quran. Alhamdulillah, I sat with this Quran and I just recited it and recited it and recited it until I memorized it. Now, whenever I recite the Quran, I pray for her and I pray for my community. That, Ya Allah, even though I could have found a Quran from any place else, but at the end of the day, when I memorized the Quran, I memorized from the Mus'haf that was gifted to me by a Khoja lady from your community. So now tell me, am I crazy? Am I a Mondazimu? Am I a lunatic that I would want evil or harm for a community that everything good in my life, so much of the good in my life, is directly connected to this community? And that's why this community is always in my du'as. I always pray and genuinely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, please save our communities from the fire. Save them from humiliation on the Day of Judgment. Because I can see in light of all the verses of the Qur'an, a hadith of Ahlul Bayt, which are verified by the Qur'an, once you understand the conspiracy of the ghulat, you will realize our communities are in trouble. Because you people have ended up accepting narratives that go against Allah's book. So now that I have found out about all of this, I've realized that our communities in some areas have deviated from the Quran. Not in all. MashaAllah, you people, you pray, you fast, you perform Hajj and Umrah, you believe in Amr bil Ma'roof, Nahi an Munkar. You've, I'm not saying you're outside the fold of Islam. I'm not saying you're Kuffar or Mushrikeen wal Ayyadu Billah. Absolutely not. I consider you to be Muslimin and Mu'mineen who have fallen into certain forms of shirk which Allah has severely warned against in the Quran. So it's just like a Muslim brother, you see he's doing show off, let's say. So show off is shirk. Riyah is clearly shirk in our sources. It doesn't mean we say he's kafir, he's mushrik, he's outside the fold of Islam, he's not our brother. No, he's still our brother. He's a mu'min, Muslim, but yes, he has fallen into shirk. What do we do? We go to him, we explain to him from Quran, and a hadith said, Baba, this is wrong. You will lose the ajr of your reward. You will lose everything. What's the use? What will you get from showing off two, three people? Huh? Do it for Allah. So this is what we are doing to our people as well when it comes to du'as and istighatha and the issue of asking imams and this and that. We are simply humbly telling you that, Baba, Allah has forbidden this in the Quran. You will lose nothing if you spend your entire life calling upon Allah alone only. Why? Because you can open this book literally. You say, Ya Allah, was this your book or not? It was Allah in this book. It is written. This is Allah's book. Thalik al kitabu la raybaki. Surah Yunus. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa ma kana hadha al Quranu an yuftara min dunillah." This Quran could not have been fabricated by any entity lesser than Allah. It cannot be from lesser than Allah. Then, Ya Allah, what is this Quran? You tell us. If it is not from other than you, then where did it come from? Allah says, "I'll tell you." Walakin tasdiq al ladhi bayna yadi. This Quran is a confirmation of the truth that came before it. وَتَفْصِيلَ الْكِتَابِ It's an exposition of the mother book. لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ مِنْ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ There is no doubt in it that it is from the sustainer and lord of all the existing realms. So Allah is testifying that this is book. Sawa? Now Allah in this book, in Surah Ghafir, Surah 40, verse 60, what does he say? وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي your Lord, your sustainer has said, call upon me, I'll answer you. Say, Allah, you said, call upon me, I'll answer you. Khalas, I spent my whole life calling upon you. Can Allah have a case against you? No. طيب, now your whole life you spent calling Allah also, but together with him you called, Ya Ali Madad. 
and you called upon Imam Hussein and Abul Fadl al Abbas and Bibi and all these personalities. And look, we are their descendants. We should be happy that you are giving them the status of God. No, no we are not happy because we have read their writings, we have read their teachings. They invoke la'na of Allah and they rain down fire and brimstone on all those who made claims about them that or gave sifat of Allah to them, qualities, attributes of Allah. They said, don't give us this. We are humble slaves. Keep us as humble slaves. Don't make us the focus of your dua, supplication, worship, devotion, pilgrimage, all of this. Keep it for Allah. Then what are you there for, ya Ahl al-Bayt, ya Sadati wa Mawaliya? They say, we are here role models. We are here to defend Islam, to teach Quran, to teach Sunnah, to transmit the teachings of our grandfather. That's our job. Not that you start worshipping us. Not that you start doing dua to us, Baba. Dua, Allah taught you in the Quran, do dua to me. If Allah wanted you to do dua to Imam Ali, wouldn't he say, Ud'u Ali and yastajib lakum? Wouldn't he say, call upon Ali, he will answer you? Wouldn't he tell you that I have empowered Ali with all the powers, divine powers? So now you can, whatever you want, awlad, rizq, this. Allah never told you this. This is why, and not only did he not tell you this, when you go in the books, now how many books, how many ahadiths do I present in one lecture? Go and visit other Al-Islah lectures. We have shown you how the Imams rejected all the false claims of the Ghulat that Allah has given them these powers. We have a whole lecture entitled the Imams literally said we are powerless. Allah has not given us these divine functions that you think Allah has given us. He's not given us. Then what has he given you? He's given us knowledge of the book, sunnah of the messenger, deep insight into the religion. Come and learn from us. They asked you to learn from them, not to call upon them, worship them, devote yourself to them, pilgrimage, this, that. And they never told you we will save you from the fire. They said, you be obedient to Allah, he will save you. Either through us, through anyone, that's his decision. But you, your obedience should be to Allah. Your loyalty should be to Allah. Don't bring us in between. We are not here to block your path between you and Allah. We are here to facilitate your acceleration towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in any case, uh, <clears throat> I apologize for taking so much time, but obviously my main point is that the community that gave us so much good, and even the Quran that I memorized, I memorized from the gift that was given to me by one of your community members. What would possess me? And and and, and so many of all, all of my books are gifts to me by Khoja community members. I didn't even have to buy these books. So after going through the Quran that you gifted me, after going through all these books that you gifted me, I came across so much knowledge and research that made me realize that some of the things you are doing in your communities are completely forbidden by Allah. And they go against Allah's vision. They go against Prophet's teaching, Ahlul Bayt's teaching. However, after discovering all of this, what do you expect me to do? I'll tell you, first of all, what I wanted to do. I swear by Allah. I would be the happiest, happiest man if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had some kind of deal or arrangement whereby after finding out the truth, you can get away by hiding it. I would be the happiest. It would make my life so much easy. Instead of getting all the curses and abuses, I could just, my best, what I was really, really, I would have been really happy if Allah had allowed for people like me the best option after finding out all the damning evidence would be to quietly disappear into the dark night. As in, I would be like, okay, I've discovered that these community activities that are happening, these practices, these beliefs, these rituals, which are famous in our community. Let's say I discover the evidence that this is false. For me, best case scenario would be to say, okay, Allah, I will not do it. But please don't ask my, me to stop my community from doing it. Because, ya Allah, you know what they will do to me. And if, if, if I didn't know what they would do to me, the community members before Al-Islah started, I still have their letters because I had discussions with community members. I, I, we have discovered all of these things from our research, from our readings. Um, how do we, what do we do? And some were saying, Bana, this is the, do this, do that. Some community members, when we decided that, no, we have to, we have to come out and we have to share all of this research. Because if we don't, then Yawmul Qiyamah on the Day of Judgment, you people would come and grab my collar 
and say tane sharam na aati you had no shame you lived amongst us you grew up amongst us and you benefited from our resources quran you memorized from our quran um ahadith you memorized from books that you were introduced to within our institutions everything you know learning how to speak the language public speaking skills everything you trained for within our community centers and then you went away you forgot about us and you discovered so much evidence in the quran and the authentic teachings of ahlul bayt that convinced you that we had gone astray in certain areas and that we were basically up for very severe humiliation and even possible loss of salvation on the day of judgment you discovered all of this and you didn't raise one voice you didn't tell us even one word like you just benefited from all of this and you ran away and you forgot about us you didn't even care so this is the guilt and this is the this is the thing that was bothering me and burdening me that i have to do something i can't i can't watch silently as khurafat and fabrications and fake narratives are presented and our innocent people our people are not bad people our people are not evil when i do dua for for our communities i beg and i plead and i cry to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i say ya allah our community people have mercy on them open their hearts Ya Allah, please let it not be that the first time they find all this research we are presenting on Al-Islam is not research really, it's just simple verses of the Quran most of the time. So Ya Allah, please don't let it be that the first time they find out the verses of the Quran are so clear. And if you understand these verses of the Quran, Wallahi, I'm telling you, you will realize that you are upon deviation and error. And that if this Quran is true, you people are in for severe humiliation. I can guarantee that as a PhD, I, I'm telling you even without the PhD in Arabic, read the Quran in translation. I read it in Arabic, so I understand it the way the people of the time to it was revealed understood it. That's what learning classical Arabic does to you. You are able to understand the Quran the way the original Arabs understood it. But even if you read it in translation, the Quran is so clear. When I'm telling you in at the time of Hisab, you will have no hujja. Remember, no Maulana, no Ayatollah, no Islam, no uh, traditional. No one will come to you. Allah is repeatedly saying in the Quran, وَمَا لَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا نَصِيرٍ You will have no helper, no guardian, no protector, no intercessor. And Allah says, I will judge you by this book. So Allah will open this book so many places. He has warned you, don't call upon, don't supplicate to entities besides me. Don't create sects. I want all of you Muslims to be brothers. Don't hate each other. Don't do this. Don't do that. So much of what don't become, don't take rivals for Allah. Don't take the attributes of Allah and share them with his slaves. So many of the warnings of this book, my dear brothers and sisters, you have violated. So all I'm trying to do, I'm not imposing myself on you. I'm not forcing you to listen to me or I'm just saying Baba I'm presenting you you don't have to accept just think about it reflect over it do tadabbur read yourself don't just go by what I'm quoting and narrating maybe I'm narrating wrong I check check yourself you will see the truth I'm telling you this Quran is not rocket science the core basic uh, teachings of the Quran are very simple core requirements of salvation Allah has repeated them so many times you have no excuse so that's why my dearest community members, please understand that this entire enterprise is based on love, not hate. If I did not want khair for you, if I did not love you, if I did not feel obliged, if I did not feel indebted to you, I could very easily, I have my career, I have so much work in front of me, I have so many research papers for my own field that I am, uh, that I have to write their books in other fields that I'm in the process of writing, I have so much work to keep me busy. Trust me, it is a big sacrifice of time for me to come and sit and, and, and talk here. But I feel it, it is worth it if it can save even one person from adab of Allah. That will work in my favor, inshallah. But I'm telling you, the adab of Allah is real. Let us not mess with it. This life will come and go like this. And yeah, if I wanted, I could have disappeared. 
uh, and just left you to your deviations. But you would then grab my neck and you would say that, Baba, why couldn't you have come and warned us? If you knew all of this, okay, for our Molana resident Alim, they were scared, they were this. Why didn't you? Tu to bada tane auto to ne? You had read the Quran. You had read all of these things. When you saw that we were in this, why did you not raise even a single voice? And then what would I answer you? No, there I would have to. Here I'm telling you why are you bad, bad mouthing me? Why this? Why that? But there I would not be able to tell you why are you bad mouthing me? Because there I would have to hang my head in shame in front of you and say, yeah, either I was too scared, or I was too this, or I was too that. But would you accept that as an excuse? You would say, Baba, you had no, yani you should have cared for us. You had no regard for us. So now that I have told you all of this, inshallah on the day of judgment, you cannot come to me and grab my collar because I am upon absolute certainty. This Quran, studying it in the language in which Allah revealed it, gave me absolute clarity. Alhamdulillah, I am in no doubt now. I am under no confusion. Everything became crystal clear. Once I studied the Quran and the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, which are in line with this Quran. So within the Hadith books, you have some uh, a Hadith which are by fabricators. You have some Hadith which are authentic. How do you know which are authentic, which are fabricators? Master this book. Every Hadith that agrees with the narrative of the Quran, we know it's from our Imam. Every Hadith that even slightly goes here or there, Imam says to Pambali, throw it, discard it. That's what we do. And that's how we have ended up at Al-Islah. If you take the Quran seriously, throw away all the narrations, all the verdicts and statements and opinions of scholars which go against the Quran and accept only that which is in agreement with the Quran, you will end up here. And this is what this whole enterprise is about. It is not about hating any community or, I don't know, getting back at any community. What do I get back for? You, you people hold a community worldwide. I cannot think of any single instance before al-Islah of any kind of injustice that you did to me, any haq of mine that you took away from me, any zulm that you did to me, none of that. I can happily testify in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all these years I spent with the Khoja community, no one gave me anything except for love, honor, respect, kindness, generosity, love. So I would be a completely, completely, completely times 10 crazy person to return your love, kindness, generosity, and favors by giving you and selling you misguidance. I, I just cannot understand how anyone could think that I would, I would do any such thing. So in any case, all I can say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, is that I'm offering you the best nasiha the best of what I've learned. You know, so much of my knowledge comes from books that you gifted me. If I had just swallowed all that knowledge and use it to help myself and not shared it back with you, then you would call me Choyo, Ausio. You would say he's so stingy. He, he benefited from our resources. He did not give back. Al-Islah is my way of giving back to you. Literally, it is my way of giving back to you. You will not thank me maybe here. You will not appreciate maybe over here. But Yom al Qiyamah, you will understand, inshallah what I was all about. And my respected father as well. My respected father, if you think I'm Nindo Bacho, you know, maybe you might think that I'm a very small kid. What do I know? What do I? My respected father, Tono, you, you know him now. He is now in his mid seventies. And he says to me every time we talk, he says, Baba, it's now I'm preparing to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah has given me everything in this life. What is left? I have seen everything I wanted. I have... I have not no wish left in my life that Allah has not fulfilled. Everything Allah has fulfilled that I wanted. So now you expect such a person will come to you. He has no interest left in dunya. And he's preparing to meet with his creator. And at this time he will come and he will sell you misguidance. And he'll give you bad advice. And he will try to take you to Jahannam. Like, this is what I don't understand. Now, you can disagree with him. You can say maybe he's sincerely misguided. That is not true, but at least that I can. Kidogo, kidogo it can serve as a theory. Sawa? But for you to say father and son, they hate the community. And they have bughz, alokane, bughz che community. Allahu Akbar.
والعياذ بالله this is such a big bohtan this is such a big lie and again our love for our community i for, forgive pramukh sahab and whoever else has said this inshallah on the day of judgment even after i launched al islah you people threw way too many stones you people maybe don't even remember all of the stuff that you have said and done against us but i am telling you after all of this when i stand in front of the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for judgment and allah says i am giving you the right and the authority to launch lawsuits against all those because as far as i am judging you your intentions were sincere inshallah i hope that's how allah will judge me but i am now giving you the right to sue in my court any and every person who bad mouthed you because you were only at least from your perspective you are defending the book of allah the sunnah of the messenger you are refuting lies against the ahlul bayt so i am giving you the power and authority now to sue to launch a lawsuit against all those hojas who spoke evil of you who backbited you who slandered you who tried to cause you all kinds of harm and hardship and difficulty and i'm telling you as i stand here and as allah is my witness i will say ya allah i forgive them all forgive them all despite everything they did yes despite everything they did because i still believe after all of this i cannot forgive the fact that i cannot forget the fact that it is your community that connected me to the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if i succeed on the day of judgment it will only be because of the fadl of allah and this book and i cannot forget the fact that after my parents and immediate family you people and your community played the biggest role in connecting me to the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in making me develop desire to memorize this book and to take it seriously and because you connected me to this book and because you connected me to the books of my forefathers and my ancestors this is your ihsan in light of which i will inshallah ta'ala and i hope allah makes me truthful in this i will forgive all your all your arrows and all your stones and all your hurtful things that you have said about us inshallah the heart is clean the heart is purified from all of that and i'll still say allah uh, i wish the best for them and if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this if if the worst case scenario which we are fearing for which we are doing all this we are taking all these stones the worst case scenario we fear for you is what the azab of allah if god forbid that happens and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides not to forgive the fact that you went against his book and you went against all of these things wallahi no one will be more hurt than us because we grew up with you we had that relationship with you we had that association with you we loved you with all our hearts and all our minds and sincerely and we desired khair for you we de we desired salvation for you we wanted to see you in the highest stations of jannah inshallah ta'ala so yeah nothing will be more heartbreaking for us and then to see you and us and anyone else fail in that test just because of not reading a simple book that allah repeatedly kept on saying nubay kadhalika nubayyinu alayat kadhalika nufassilu alayat thus do i make my signs clear thus do i make my verses clear thus do i how many times allah told you book is clear book is clear book is clear you trusted molvis and scholars were telling no 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 you don't know anything you don't touch this book no no you just go to fabricated narrations of bihar which your own scholars have discredited and said kazab malun this yeah we take tafsir of quran from there we don't take we don't uh, trust what the quran is saying we trust what the akhbar this is akhbari shiism which your scholars worked so hard to abolish so khair in the end what can i say i wish our community is the best i my heart is clean and inshallah i hope you people some day if not today not tomorrow some day if not some day in the hereafter you can find it in you to forgive and overlook any and all shortcomings on our side because we are also not angels we are humans when we see deviation sometimes we get passionate sometimes you know we may end up saying harsh words maybe 
out of passion. Sometimes we might get emotional. Sometimes we are all we have all the weaknesses and limitations of humans. So we are not claiming at all that we have not uh, made mistakes or. So we we ask Allah's forgiveness and we ask your forgiveness for that. May Allah forgive us all. May Allah grant us success in the hereafter. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> join us in the hereafter in his mercy. And may it be in his mercy. Not that on the day of judgment we get separated with some of us in adab and others outside the adab. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.